Hi class, this is Coach RJ. Welcome to our recorded lesson for module number five. And before we reveal our topic for module number five, uh, once again, please do not forget to subscribe and like into my YouTube channel. <laughs> so, you know guys, 2020 has been a very crazy period for us, right? The economy, because of the pandemic, the economy went down, not only in the Philippines, but also in the whole wide world. So therefore, it is really important for us to identify to which particular business would be a very profitable one, or what can we start, or what type of business can we start in this kind of crisis? And not only that, but what can we do to be able to make our businesses strive in the middle of the pandemic? So therefore, our topic for module number five is industry and environmental analysis, business opportunities identification. Our objective is that we are going to demonstrate an understanding of industry analysis, its principles, tools, and techniques leading to the identification of business opportunities. First, let's define what a business is. When we talk about a business, this is an undertaking by a person or a group of persons who are partners or of stockholders who own a juridical entity known as a corporation. So if you guys consider the member, uh, we already have talked about, I think in organization and management, what are the different business organizations, right? So um, if you guys can still remember, let's take a review. When we talk about a simple way to set up a business, it is owned by a single individual who is singly, singly responsible for running the business is, and is accountable for all debts and obligations related to the business. So which form of business organization is this? If you answer sole proprietorship, you are correct. Now, next one. It is an agreement in which two or more persons combine their resources in business with the view of making a profit. Is drawn up. Agreement is drawn up and profits are divided among the partners according to the terms of agreement. So what are this or what form of business organization is this? If your answer is partnership, that is correct. You also did talk about a legal entity that is separate from its owners, the shareholders. So what is this? You are correct, that's a corporation. So under corporation, no share, shareholder is personally liable for the debts or obligations or acts of the corporation. So the directors and officers can bear liability for their involvement with the corporation. Okay. It can exist for a life of 50 years, which is renewable for another 50 years. And the onion class has. Now, we have another form of business organization. This is an entity organized among by the people with similar needs to provide themselves with goods or services or to jointly use available resources to improve their income. So what form of business organization is this? If you answered cooperative, that is correct. When we talk about cooperative, cooperative members have an equal say in decision making with one vote per member regardless of number of shares held. There is one or there is open and voluntary membership and surplus earning is returned to the members according to the amount of their patronage. So that apat yan na forms of business organization. We have sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, and cooperative. Okay. So what is the main objective of a business? So regardless which form of business organization is that, the main objective of a business is to earn profit for its members. Now class, a business could be also part of an industry. So when we talk about an industry naman, this is a group of companies which produce similar goods and or services. So you could see in our picture, this is a different types of industry. So we have food and beverage, we have retail, we have hospitality, we have government, financial, education, entertainment, and construction. So that's the big difference between a business and an industry. 
Okay, so pag sinabi natin industry, group of companies na siya, which produce similar goods and or services. So inside the food and beverage food and beverage industry, there are different kinds of businesses or different businesses under it. We have Jollibee, we have McDonald's, we have Max's, we have Chow King. So all of the businesses under food and beverage. Pag sinabi naman natin retail, yung SM, ba, mga Uniqlo, yung mga nagbibenta ng shoes. Okay? So, under naman ng hospitality, uh, mga tourism. Yan, di ba? Government. We have financial banks. Okay? Education schools. Entertainment. Yan, mga Viva Films. Yan, mga businesses. And then, construction. Siyempre, yung mga nagbibuild ng mga highways, roads. Okay? So, that's what a business is and an industry. So, these industries are greatly affected by the pandemic. Okay, so yung mga businesses affected yan ng um, pandemic natin. So eventually, you guys will decide to which industry you would like to belong to. Would you like to belong to food and beverage, retail, hospitality, government, financial? And you would see, this is just a sample statistics that I got from Google. Pero based on the industry statistics, biggest yung food and beverage. No? So right now, uh, during the pandemic season, we may pandemic tayo ngayon, di ba? Uh, what do you think would be the best industry to belong to? Okay? Based on the statistics. However, this is just a sample, di ba? So later, we will go on to that. Now, under the industry, you would be able to do an industry analysis. Kasi nga, just like what we have mentioned earlier, we are in the pandemic, so it's just right to do an industry analysis. So when we talk about industry analysis, this is where we study the specific market for which a company currently sells its products or plans to enter in the near future. So we are going to study to which specific market your company, your future company, sells its products or plan to enter in the near future. Okay? So it's again important to be able to understand to which industry should you go into to or even how profitable is the industry you currently belong to now there are two tools that we are going to discuss under this particular topic okay tools in evaluating business so the first tool is the SWOT analysis and the second one is the five forces model so let's discuss discuss each one of them <laughs> but first let's learn why should we do an industry analysis okay because it allows business owners to number one calculate how much profit they can generate from their business operations and the next one is to consider the number of competitors currently selling consumer goods and services in their industry just like what i mentioned earlier diba? Uh, it's so that you can see if that industry is profitable and how many competitors do you have who is currently selling the same goods and services as you are, okay? So first one, let's talk about the SWOT analysis. So as you guys can see, this is, a, this is the SWOT analysis matrix. So the SWOT analysis was created in the 1960s by business gurus Edmund B. Learned, Ronald, Roland Christensen, Kenneth Andrews, and William D. Book. In their book, Business Policy, Texts, and Cases, Irwin, 1969. SWOT, which stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats, is an analytical framework that can help a company meet its challenges, its challenges and identify new market. This framework can help identify the business's risk and rewards. It is also a means of identifying the internal and external forces that may affect the business. It is very helpful in assessing new ventures. The initiators learned Christensen Andrews and Book used a diagram as guide for identifying companies' strengths, S, weaknesses, W, opportunities, O, and threat. Strengths and weaknesses, this one, actually refers to the internal factors 
and these are the resources and experiences readily available to the business. Okay, so in strengths and weaknesses, internal factors, yan. So positive and negative. So internal factors, meaning nasa loob ng company. Okay, so strengths. So ano-ano ba yung mga example na yan? So number one, financial sources such as money and sources of funds for investment. Ano pa? Second is physical resources such as the company's location, the facilities, the machinery, and even the equipment. Another part of the internal strengths or weakness of a company could be human resources consisting of your employees. So your employees can also be your strength and they can also be your weakness. Another one is access to natural resources, trademarks, patents, and copyrights. Yeah, and part ng strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. And the last one is your current processes, such as your employee programs, department hierarchies, and software systems. Also, sales and distribution capability, marketing programs, etc. Okay, so strengths and weaknesses are all internal. Okay. Kung ano yung currently na meron yung company mo. Now, when we talk about external forces, ito naman yung opportunities and threats. Okay, wala kang control dyan. Yung strength and weaknesses, you have control over it. But opportunities and threats, you don't have control over that. Okay? Now, this includes, number one, economic trends, including local, national, and international financial trends, developments in countries, Stock market reforms in banking system, growth of the gross domestic product or GDP. Another one that is an external factor that's under opportunities and threats are your market trends, such as new products or technology or evolving buyer's profile. So, syempre, yung mga buyer's profile nag evolve yan. Kung dati, um, ito yung preferred nila, next time hindi naman, di ba? Okay. Not only the taste, but also the lifestyle behavior. So, um, come to think of it, kung ngayon, dahil nagka-pandemic tayo, nagkaroon ng mga lifestyle changes yung mga tao. So, kung dati, um, di ba kung dati yung mga buyer natin, um, hindi sila nag exercise So, ngayon, nag exercise na sila. Dati, hindi sila umiinom ng vitamin C. So, ngayon, nag-vitamin C na sila. So, th those are all parts of opportunity threats. Another one is national and local laws and statutes as well as political, environmental, and economic regulations. Opportunities and threats yan, ah, again, external factors. Demo demographic char characteristics of your target market such as age, the gender, and culture of the customers. Relationships with suppliers and co-owners and competitive threats. Now, listen carefully, class. Ha? Tandaan nyo to. Before an owner can plan for its business future, he or she must first evaluate the business by identifying and analyzing your internal and external resources and threats. The SWOT analysis is a tool that can help a person by enabling him or her to identify and assess the internal and external forces that can affect the business. When you use this properly and regularly, this can serve as a guide for your company to attain to attain its success. Okay, not only that you can use this before your business starts, but during, pwede mo rin siyang gamitin yung business mo. So, nagkaroon ng changes. So, most probably, maganda to, gawin mo siya mga every quarter so that you can analyze and identify what are your current strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Kasi nagbabago yan from time to time. So maganda kung i-assess mo siya from time to time as well. When drafting a SWOT analysis, what is created is a table split up into four columns, just like this one, to list each element side by side for comparison. Most of the time, the business's strengths and weaknesses will not match the listed opportunities and threats. And this is where the owner should attempt to somehow make them meet. Okay? So, lagi niyong gagamitin to, itong SWOT analysis natin, kagaya ng nabanggit ko kanina. So, you would list down all of your strengths, your, all of your opportunities, and you would also list down all your weaknesses and, yeah, your strengths, support, um, your strengths, support, uh, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then, for you to be able to meet them up, 
Okay, para magamit mo yung SWOT analysis matrix is that you can answer these questions. Okay, so strength opportunity strategies. Okay, which of the company's strengths can you use to maximize the opportunities that you have identified? What actions can you take to minimize the company's weaknesses? How can you use the company's strengths to minimize the threats you have identified? And how can you minimize the company's weaknesses to avoid threats that you identified? So for us to fully understand okay, the how, how SWOT analysis matrix works, let's take a look at this example. So I think this is an example of a restaurant. Okay, because I got this from Google as well. So this is a SWOT analysis of a restaurant. Now let's take a look what are their strengths. So sabi nung restaurant, ang strength niya is that they have excellent well traffic location. Meron silang magandang reputation among their uh, local community. Then they have a seasonal menu locally sourced. So ibig sabihin na seasonal menu, kung ano yung uh, meron ngayon sa season, yun yung sineserve nila. O diba? Ang ganda nun. Ang saya nun, di ba? Ibig sabihin, laging fresh ang ino-offer nilang pagkain. So, ano naman yung mga weaknesses nila? So, they have higher costs than comparable chain restaurants. So, guro kasi nga, most probably, uh, locally sourced yung mga product nila, laging fresh. So, medyo mataas yung cost na meron sila. Okay? Single locations means limited reach. So, isa lang yung location nila. So, yung ibang target market nila, hindi nila na-reach. They have a modest advertising budget. So, Konti lang daw yung budget nila for advertising. So, therefore, limited yung reach nila. And they are not currently using food delivery apps and technology. So, yun yung pinakalagiging problem ng restaurant na to. Na they are not using any food delivery apps technology. So, therefore, aside from that, they have single location. And uh, hindi nila na-reach yung target market nila. So, these are all your internal factors. Tingnan naman natin yung mga external factors nila. So, let's have our opportunities. So, there is a growing interest in support for local resource ingredients. So, ayan. So, since, uh, ayan, sabi daw, isa daw na opportunity is yung nagkakaroon na ng support na locally sourced ingredients ang um, yung mga customers nila. So, another one is that the seasonal menu keeps things fresh and interesting. So, Siyempre, aantay mo. O, kunyari, ano ngayon? Uh, tagmangga. O, yan yung isa-serve natin kasi tagmangga ngayon. Okay? Tapos, there's also a potential growth for via delivery apps and technology. Okay? Now, th we, this restaurant also have threats. So, they have an intensifying competition from established chain restaurants. So, may mga competition daw sila. Uncertain economic environment and rising cost of ingredients. Okay? Now, let's... Make use of our SWOT analysis. So, sabi dun kanina, di ba? Sabi dun kanina. Sabi, which of the company's strengths can be used to maximize the opportunities you identify? Ano daw yung strength ng company na pwede natin gamitin para ma-maximize yung opportunity natin? So, tingnan nyo. Okay. So, you have good reputation among local community. Okay. So, Ibig sabihin, maganda yung reputation nyo dun sa market nyo, dun sa mga taong malalapit sa inyo. Okay? Tapos, we also have, ayan, potential growth via food delivery apps technology. So, since there's already a good reputation for the local community, if you use any apps or food apps or technology, most probably, uh, mas, ano kayo, mas, uh, tatangkilikin kayo ng mga tao, di ba? So, aside from that, there's going to be a seasonal menu locally sourced. Okay, tapos ayan. So, since yung menu nyo is locally sourced, dadami din yung mga customers nyo kasi nagkaroon na ng interest and sinusuportahan na yung mga locally sourced ingredients. And, the, the seasonal menu keeps things fresh and interesting. So, because you have seasonal menu, okay, etong opportunity na to, pwede nyo i-grab yan. Okay, tingnan nyo, di ba? Ang ganda. Okay, next naman, class. What actions can you take to minimize the company's weaknesses using the opportunities you identified? So, weakness opportunity naman. Okay, so sabi, single location means limited reach. So, since you have single location and then limited reach ka, 
So, you are not currently using food delivery apps technology, pero you have an opportunity to grow, okay? Potential growth via food delivery apps and technology. So, pwede kayong mag-launch ng food delivery para ma-minimize itong weaknesses ninyo. Okay? Hopefully, you guys get that. Now, let's have naman weakness and threats. How can you minimize the company's weaknesses to avoid the threats you identify? So, weakness and threats naman. Okay, so sabi, di ba? Okay, rising cost of ingredients. Higher cost than comparable to uh, chain restaurants. Higher cost daw. Intensifying competition from established chain restaurants. So, uh, because of this, para ma-minimize, right, sabi? Minimize the company's weaknesses to avoid your threats that you have identified. So, one thing you can do, since tumataas, you or tataas yung mga cost ng ingredients, okay, so maganda siguro kung you, you try to minimize or lower, low, uh, yeah, babaan nyo yung cost ng, ng company nyo para ito, mawala yung competition nyo sa mga restaurants, yan. tapos mawala din yung, uh, ma-minimize nyo yung pagtaas ng cost sa mga ingredients na ginagamit nyo sa mga food niyo. Okay? So, that is what SWOT analysis is. Okay? So, next one. Let's talk about the other tool that you can use to evaluate business opportunity. Okay? So, the next one is five forces model. Now, let's have a little background on what the five forces model is. Another Analytical tool that can be used to assess a business is Porter's Five Forces of Competitive Position Analysis. It was developed in 1979 by Michael E. Porter or of Harvard Business School as a framework or a guide for assessing and evaluating the competitive strength and position of a business organization. Under Porter's theory, he identifies five forces that determine the competitiveness and attractiveness of a market which seek to locate the power of a business situation. Its current competitive position and the strength of a position that an organization may enter into. These five sources helps in identifying if new products or services are potentially profitable. Once the area where power lies is identified, then areas of strength can be pinpointed and exploited. Solutions to weaknesses may be proposed and possible mistakes can be avoided. So this is the five forces model. Okay, again, this was introduced by Michael E. Porter of Harvard Business School. And this is a guide again for assessing and evaluating the competitive strength and position of a business organization. Okay, now this is the uh, five forces that needs to be evaluated. The first one is the threat of new entrants, supplier power, customer power, threat of substitution, and degree of competition. Okay, so first let's discuss supplier power. Under the supplier power, it means this is the number of your suppliers, the size of your suppliers, the uniqueness of the service offered by this, your supplier, your ability to substitute your supplier and the cost of changing. It is important to assess how much power the supplier has in his ability to drive up prices. A supplier enjoys this power if there are few suppliers of an essential input and they therefore control the supply of that input. Okay, another source of power is how unique the product or service is. The more the you the more unique the product, the easier it is for the supplier to drive up the prices. So, ito yung pinag-usapan natin na supplier mo. Kano kadami ba yung mga supplier mo? Uh, if you are to enter that business, how many suppliers do you have? So, syempre, kapag unique yung products na ino-offer nila, kaya nilang taasan yung prices nila. And therefore, maapektuhan din yung prices ng products or services na i-offer mo. Okay? The magnitude of the cost of switching from one to one supplier to another is likewise a factor, such that when cost of switching is high, 
buyers of suppliers would prefer to stick it out with one supplier, thus giving the supplier the power of raising prices. Okay? Remember that, Lasha, when you enter a business, how much power does your supplier have? Okay? The next one is your buyer power. If a supplier can enjoy the power to drive prices up, it is also possible for a buyer to drive the prices down. An assessment needs to be made on how easy it is for buyers to drive your prices down. The smaller the number of the buyers in the market, the greater is the power enjoyed by the buyer. Likewise, the more important an individual buyer is to the organization, the greater his power is. Okay? The buyer cost of switching from one supplier to another is also a determinant of the extent of the buyer's power to bring prices down. If cost is minimal, then it will be easy for the buyer to switch to another supplier and bargain on lower prices of the input. So, syempre, may, buyer din, ah, may power din yung buyer mo. So, kapag syempre, konti yung number ng buyers mo in the market, Meron silang, greater power, meron silang greater power to drive your prices down. So, syempre, kasi nga, konti lang naman yung buyers mo. So, di ba, mami, kasabihan tayo, there is plenty more buyers in the sea, sabi nga. Pero pag konti lang, kaya nilang controlling yung prices ng products and services na iyo offer mo. Next one is your competition or competitive rivalry. Degree of competition. The number and capability of competitors in the market will also impact on the attractiveness of the market. If competitors are numerous and offer basically similar products and services, the market will be less attractive. So natu natural yung, di ba? Kapag marami kang kakompetensya, it means to say that less attractive yung market na yun kasi marami ka ng kaagaw sa atensyon ng customers mo. Low capability of competitors to meet the market's current needs will serve as an attractive opportunity for the firm. So, kapag yung competitors mo eh hindi nila ma-meet yung current needs ng mga buyers mo, then it's an, at an attractive opportunity for you. Para, ang gagawin mo naman is that you are going to offer what your competitors cannot. Diba? So, yan yung number of competitors. The next one is the threat of substitution. Okay? When it is easy to substitute products in a market, it is expected that buyers will switch to alternatives in case of price increases. So, ito yung pinag-usapan natin sa supply and demand, if you guys can still remember. Uh, kapag the butter and margarine, you can still remember that. Kapag normally, minibili nila butter, but tum pag tumaas ang prices ng butter, they would switch to margarine. Okay, so, titingnan nyo rin kung gano'n ba kadaling i-substitute yung products and services na gusto mong i-offer. The suppliers will enjoy less power to drive prices up and the market will be less attractive kapag madaling mag-switch ng alternative kapag tumaas yung presyo. The next one is threat of new entrants. Gano'n ba kadaling pumasok sa business na gusto mong Pasukin. Okay, when investors see that the market is profitable, they will desire to join the bandwagon or bandwagon and get a share of the profits. But when new investors enter market, the share of the participants in the market will be divided among poor people and will therefore decline, thus eroding your profits. However, if barriers of entry prevent new participants from entering the market, Profits will be maintained among existing participants. So, gano'ng kadali ba daw pumasok sa uh, type of business that you'd like or type of industry that you'd like to belong to? So, time and cost of entry, specialist knowledge, econom economies of scale, cost advantages, technology protection, and barriers to entry. Okay? So, paano ba natin ginagamit yung five forces of model? But before we... Take a look at an, an example of this five forces model. Let's first learn the importance of five forces analysis. So the reason why we use five forces analysis is to again understand the factors affecting the profitability of a specific industry. And this can help you form a decision on whether you should enter a specific industry 
whether you increase your capacity in a specific industry and also what are uh, and also developing competitive strategies in this kind of industry. Okay, so those are the reasons or importance of Porter's five courses. Now let's take a look for an example. Okay, so let me share it to you guys. Okay, guys, so this is a website wherein you can also take a look at uh, some more information about Porter's five courses. Okay, uh, I'm sharing, uh, I already have shared the link of this website in our LMS. So all you have to do is to click it so, so that you would be able to see more information about Porter's five courses. Okay, yeah, so you guys can just read it na lang. So this is um, the okay, five forces that is brought together in figure one. Okay, yeah. So how does how do we use this? Okay. There is actually a, a worksheet that we will be using. So this is the worksheet. I'll share this then. So this is the worksheet. Okay that we can use to be able to brainstorm on the idea with regards the situation the market the situation in the market okay so paano siya ginagamit so all you have to do is to list down the threat of new entries yan yeah, kunyari business mo you think of a business list down the threat of your entries the supplier power competitive rivalry buyer power and threat of substitution okay and then right after writing it down here the next thing that we need to do is to write the key factors on the worksheet and summarize the size and scale of the force on the diagram. So, paano yung gagawin? Okay, so you will use a single plus sign for a force that's moderately in your favor or a negative sign for a force that is moderately against you. Double plus sign for a force that's strongly in your favor or double negative sign for the one that's strongly against you. For a neutral force naman, you can use O. Okay, now tingnan natin yung example para mas lalo natin maintindihan. Okay, so ang example natin dito is from the business of Martin Johnson. He is deciding whether to switch career or become a farmer. He's always loved the countryside and he wants a job where he can be his own boss. So he creates the following five forces analysis to help him decide. So tingnan natin ng mas uh, naka-zoom. Okay, so si Martin Johnson daw, gusto niyang maging farmer. Okay, so gusto niyang mag-resign sa work niya, tapos mag-countryside na siya. So according to his five forces, ito yan, sinulat niya dito sa competitive rivalry. Yung farming daw, farming yung gusto niyang business eh. So under the farming, marami daw competitors. Very many competitors, commodity products, low switching costs, low customer loyalty, high cost of living market. So kaya ang nilagay niya is double negative sign. Okay, tinaman natin yung buyer power. Sabi niya, konti lang daw yung buyer niya, large super, supermarket. Sabi niya, can, can we be cooperatives? Very large orders, homogeneous products or pare-pareho, extreme Proof of sensibility, ability to substitute yung mga buyers daw. So, dito, double negative sign din yung nilagay niya kasi sobrang again sa kanya yan. Dami niyang uh, konti lang yung supermarket, yan, konti lang yung buyers. Okay? So, next naman, threat of new entry, gano'ng kandaling pumasok sa farming. Sabi niya, hindi naman masyadong expensive to enter this in industry. Uh, there's also an experience needed. But training is easily available. Some economies of scale, some cost benefits if in the business for some time. No technology protection, no barriers to entries. Kaya nilagay niya, single negative sign. Okay, next is supplier power. Moderate number of suppliers. Sabi, suppliers are large. Merong mga similar products. They can substitute. And pwede mo naman baguhin yung supplier mo. And neutral supplier power. Kaya O yung nilagay niya. Next naman, threat of substitution. Uh, substitution. <laughs> Some cross-product substitution. <laughs> and ability to import food. Kaya sa kanya, 
um, single negative side. So, ito yung overall niya. Okay, yan. Okay? Tingnan natin yung kanyang kanyang analysis pagdating dito. I think nakakita nyo na agad kung ano yung analysis. Uh, the, the big question here is, should he enter the farming business based from the five por uh, porter's five horses? Should he enter or no? Based sa nakita nyo, tignan nyo nga. Negative, negative, double negative, negative. Diba? So, alam, feeling ko alam nyo na eh, no? So, tingnan natin. His findings worry him. The threat of new entry is quite high. If anyone looks as if they're making a sustained profit, new competitors can come into the industry easily reducing profit. So, kasi nga, diba? Madaling pumasok, not too expensive, diba? Competitive rivalry is also extremely high. Double negative siya, oh, sa kanya. If someone raises prices, he or she will be quickly undercut. Intense competition puts strong downward pressure on prices. Buyer power is strong. Again, implying a strong downward pressure on prices. Kaya double negative yan kasi again sa kanya. Then there is some threat to, uh, threat to substitution. Unless Martin is able to find some way of changing the situation, this looks like a very tough industry to survive in. Maybe he'll need to specialize in a sector of a market that's protected for some of these forces or find a related business that is stronger in the position. Okay, so you see guys how uh, very effective Porter's five forces in deciding to enter a mark, uh, type of industry or not. So you guys can use this if you'd like to enter nyari, food and beverage o kaya uh, ano pa ba yung mga pinag-usapan natin, di ba? Nag-usap pa tayo ng different types of industry. So, food and beverage, we also have retail, mga clothes, hospitality, government, financial, etc. Di ba? So, you can use the Porter's Five Forces to assess if which type of industry would you like to belong to. Okay? Alright. So, this is the uh, worksheet that I will be sharing. So, kindly be updated na lang, class. Uh, on what activities should we do to be able to apply uh, SWOT analysis and Porter's five forces. Okay, so again, a quick recap on the things that we have discussed. Once again, we talked about the difference of a business to an industry. We also did talk about what industry analysis is, the two tools in using or evaluating business. We have SWOT analysis and uh, the five forces model. We also did talk about uh, the importance of industry analysis and the importance of Porter's five forces model. Okay, and we also talked about okay some example for SWOT analysis and Porter's five forces. So thank you so much, class, for listening in our module number five. Let's keep in touch in our elements. Take care, stay safe. God bless you. Coach RJ.